networks for um, the, the, uh, the uh, cultural and entertainment industries. Every activity has a global network with a different geography. That has been very well shown by Peter Taylor and his research group at Loughborough University, mapping the networks uh, between cities on a global scale and showing that each functional network has a different geography, but they all coincide in some of the keynotes, meaning the network of high technology and the network of manufacturing of, of, non, of low tech manufacturing are not the same. The network of advanced services and the network of uh, universities are not the same. The network of drug traffic, which is very important, and the, and the network of uh, cultural entertainment production are not the same. But each one of these global networks has localities which are nodes of this system and then attract people, capital, power into these particular localities. The more these, multi the more these networks, which are of different kind, coincide in their layers in one particular node, and the bigger the attraction of this node, not only because it has more networks converging into that node, but because the interaction between the different networks takes place in that node. And that's why you have the, the, the mega metropolitan area, um, metropolitan regions. So for instance, London is a main node in every aspect, in every aspect. But uh, let's say, uh, the, to some extent, um, if, we, if we talk about Latin America, uh, Buenos Aires is, is a mega node in many of the functions, but not in high technology, for instance. And, and not, uh, but it is in cultural and entertainment industries. Um, these days, the, the Latin American soap operas are beating in the competition the American soap operas in the export markets uh, from Mexico, from Venezuela, from Colombia, and particularly lately from Argentina. So get the idea. Uh, the, the process of globalization is linked to the process of urbanization, and both are supported by networks that are organized around a infrastructure of uh, computerized segments of communication which is not only internet, telecommunications, etc., but is also the networks which are ba based on um, fast transportation and long distance transportation. Um, airplanes and airports are fundamental, of course, and this is a computerized system. I mean, you don't have pilots. They put pilots so that people are quiet, but it's really the computer that flies the plane. Uh, the pilot usually drinks whiskey in the, in the, in the meantime, and, and, and the, the co-pilot takes the, the, the plane to go out to, to take off and, and land. Um, the, or the um, containers, the, the, all the, the shipments are based on containers, through ships, through trains, through trucks. All this is computers. All this is computerized. Otherwise, how you know that the T-shirt that being weaved in, uh, in, in, in the Pearl River Delta ends up being uh, in, in London through a number of connections. It's all computerized and all organized. So global, globalization is a global network of connection, and the nodes of these networks are what constitute the metropolitan regions. Now, this is what leads to the explanation on why spatial concentration is so important and why spatial concentration is really what determines the spatial dynamics and the structure of our planet. Uh, first of all, there is this, the infrastructure of connectivity, the nodes of the communication system, which is multimodal. And in fact, this is an all analysis in, in, in geography and, and in, 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 in city and regional development analysis. Uh, cities always had been nodes of communication systems, both inter-urban and intra-urban. So there are communication systems. They always have been. These places started like this, too, being a node in a global trade communication system between Europe and the East Indies. But it's more than that in our economy. What is specific in our economy is uh, there are cities are also based on the capacity of developing uh, innovation. 
and what I um, labeled years ago, milieu of innovation. That is innovation that milieu territorial production complexes that through synergy generate more wealth, much more wealth than what is invested in any of the activities. Um, Silicon Valley is the typical example of that. Uh, with uh, Peter Hall, we also studied around the world the formation of what we call the technopoles of the world and trying to show under which conditions these milieus of innovation are constituted and how uh, different factors of production come into the innovation in high technology manufacturing and high technology design. All these high value, uh, high added value activities are linked to processes of innovation which depend on territorial concentration. And that you, you cannot move from there uh, to actually ensure the level of innovation if you disperse the activities. Um, the same thing now in advanced services. Advanced vision services depend on concentration in a given territory and on face-to-face -face interaction. So all the high level, high value added activities require concentration and then from there they are linked to lower level activities with less value which then are distributed around the world. But this logic of being concentrated in one area reproduces at different levels. So you don't go from high level of concentration in the city of London or in Silicon Valley or in Sao Paulo to then disperse, uh, dispersal patterns of activities. You go into a smaller nodes that link to other nodes who link to other nodes until the whole system is constructed in a scale of constant interaction. That's why the face-to-face um, the -face contacts um, are critical for the same reason that most research universities are based on face-to-face -face interaction within a university campus or university system in a given year. Of course, we are all in the internet and through the internet we can connect, but it's not connection of individuals. It's connection of nodes of creativity and innovation that keep the fire alive in one node and then connect to other networks. So you cannot live without the networks, but the networks cannot live without the nodes. The, the nodes are the sources of uh, creativity. This, all this is empirical research that we have done for many, many years now, and that now is, is uh, uh, solidly established in, in, in the literature. The same thing in manufacturing, in advanced technology, in advanced services. And they are also in, in all kinds of decision-making activities. Um, decision-making activities require face-to-face -face contact, particularly in financial services. Uh, why? Because many of the transactions are marginally legal and cannot be, cannot be uh, registered. And anything you do in the internet, remember, by the way, uh, is automatically registered. Anything, any interaction. Uh, remember, Microsoft had the great idea years ago to put a little code, a little encrypted code, in every Word document that we send around the world. So anything you send through Microsoft can be traced back forever in your life. Uh, okay? So uh, I will not give you the alternative so not to be a accused of, of doing the commercial uh, in, 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 a, in, a, in this distinguished academic environment. Uh, but face-to-face -face contacts are still absolutely critical. So, and then they are amplified. They are more uh, important than ever because everything that can be automated and articulated over the internet, telecommunication networks, etc., can then be decentralized everywhere, but not what happens in the key decision-making processes. That cannot be. Uh, milieus of innovation and manufacturing in manufacturing, technology, and advanced services certainly include the decisive role of universities in the um, production and distribution of knowledge, but not whatever university and no under any conditions. Why? Because Universities, in order to be factors of uh, development, they need to be uh, able to produce knowledge. Okay? It's as simple as that. I mean, being a university does not guarantee that you produce knowledge. Uh, 
in most cases, reproduces knowledge. In, in most cases, reproduces the salaries of their staff. Uh, so it's, uh, uh, therefore, it's a tricky notion that universities are actors in development. It's not an entitlement. They have to show it in practice. Second, a uh, very important characteristic is more likely than a university not only generates knowledge but induces development, which is a different thing, that is how to go from knowledge to development, under the condition of being what I call an entrepreneurial university, which is a university that engages itself deliberately into distributing knowledge, not only for, for training purposes, but also to generate research, to apply research, and to produce the kind of students and the kind of graduates who are innovators. In other words, uh, what I call people who are able to become self-programmable labor, which is the key labor in the knowledge economy. People who are able throughout their life to reprogram themselves in new activities because the kind of jobs, the kind of activities, the kind of knowledge that will happen in their lifetime will change many, many times. So the skills that you learn today will be obsolete in five years. But the skills that are not obsolete is your ca mental capacity to find information where it, it is, which is in the internet, it's all in the internet. The point is so much that you have to have the uh, mental ability to know what you look for, how to look for it, where to look for it, and how to recombine it in relationship to the application of this knowledge. So all this requires a certain type of workers, certain type of managers, certain type of researchers. So that's the role of the universities, not by magically being somewhere. And if I relate to my own experience 24 years in Berkeley, Berkeley never really produced a lot of knowledge, more than this uh, poverty of Stanford. But Stanford took care that that knowledge would become development. Berkeley, we were too aristocratic for that. Uh, and lately, it's different. But for many, many years, uh, we would not uh, do some menial things such as uh, make money or develop business or this kind of things. That was for exactly Stanford. Um, so look, uh, Berkeley was there. Nothing came out in terms of an entrepreneurial milieu in Berkeley, but Stanford uh, induced Silicon Valley. So my point is that universities are of different kinds, and only certain types of universities work. And you have the, you can have MIT in Malaysia, yes, the Malaysian Institute of Technology. You know what? It's not MIT. Uh, it's a different kind of MIT. Um, then, so this connectivity is a key factor in concentration. Milieus of innovation of all kinds are key factors in concentration. From there appears the need to provide urban services, urban amenities, and social services to the growing population that concentrates on this magnet of wealth creation. And that goes into producing jobs, particularly mainly jobs. Then the opportunities appear, and the, the migrants come from the uh, depressed areas and from the rural areas to find opportunities not so much for themselves, for their children. The key, the key variable in all the migration studies that people hope for their children. They know how bad things are going to be for them in arriving into a metropolitan area from, in most cases for the poor migrants. But they hope that their children will have educational opportunities, they will have health services, and they will be visible. While in the middle of nowhere, no one can pay attention to them. Um, combined with something else, which is the destructuring of production and survival activities in the rural areas. The, the rural areas, as, as, as bad as conditions are in the shanty towns of metropolitan areas, and in most rural areas in the world, particularly in developing countries, people have no chances for survival, no chances. Every major program uh, of the World Bank, etc., trying to retain migrants in the rural areas has failed. Why? Because people are not stupid. They know that as bad as they are going to be, they are much worse where they are. Uh, and therefore, it's unstoppable. Unstoppable in China, unstoppable. You remember some of you, the Ujama villages in Tanzania? Hmm. Now they are tourist spots, uh, which is a form of urbanizing the countryside. Uh, and I'm, here I'm not 